Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the second of revision. Um, I hope you have some notebooks so that you can jot down the things that you'll be revising today. They are to prepare you for your, um, your, your, your assessment. Please jot down those things that you find uh, important in this lesson and revise them so you prepare yourselves. My Wi-Fi here is acting up. And um, I was still on the table of contents, what we are going to do today. I want us to go through the calculations and the systems diagrams. Please um, tell me if you, 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 you don't understand anything because you need to remember these calculations for your assessments, okay? Um, Okay. Okay. We are doing hydraulic calculations. I want you to, to look, I don't want you to memorize the, the formula just for, for, for cramming, but I want you to look at the systems that we'll be dealing with and then understand the calculations with regard to the systems. Thank you. Okay. I want you to understand the system so that you don't just uh, look at a calculation as a sum, but you must understand the, 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 the operation of the system, the calculation as in the operation of the system, of the hydraulic system that you are dealing with. So just a reminder, before we closed, we looked at these formulae. So, um, the formula for mechanical advantage is load divided by effort. Input. Okay. So you divide. You divide these to get your mechanical advantage. Remember, we want our machines to be balanced. So, how do we make sure that, or how do we find out if our machines are determining their mechanical advantage? My internet is bothering me today. I'm using a different office from the one I used yesterday. Please bear with me. Okay. The load will be mechanical advantage multiplied by effort. And then obviously effort will be a, a load over mechanical advantage. Okay. I hope you have this somewhere in your textbooks. You can note it down so that you remember it. Now, I said we must understand systems. We, 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 we must understand the input versus the output. Remember yesterday we did the hydraulic check. We said the hydraulic check has a small input that is multiplied in the output. So 
This will be our input. Our arrows will be showing us the operation of the system. This will be the input. You see, it's a small cylinder. That is the input cylinder. But the output cylinder is bigger. So that is what we want our machines to do. We want to make a small input, but a big output. So here, maybe if it is the jack or a lifting system, we want to make a small input like what we did yesterday. We were just moving, pumping the lower, but the machine will then lift a heavy car because we don't want to use our heavy car. So we have a small input and a bigger output. So the input here will be multiplied in the output. Okay. So if you look at the area, I hope you're still with me. If you look at the area of the, or, or the size of the input cylinder, they, hear, they said here it is um, one centimeter square. But the output cylinder, the area of the output cylinder is a, a hundred centimeter square. So obviously we want this output to have a lifting mechanism to lift a certain weight. Okay, so this will be um, the Newtons will be there, the force. Okay, the force of the output or the output force, the force of the output cylinder. All right, so that will be measured in Newtons. Force is measured in Newtons. And area is, is uh, measured in uh, centimeters, as you can see here, the units that are used. Now, if we have to calculate the mechanical advantage of this system. We'll look at this question. The weight of the car, this is the car. This is the weight of the car. The weight of the car exerts a force. He said Newtons are units that are used for force. Can you see the chat here? Okay. So Newtons are used to measure force. So the car is exerting a force on the output cylinder. We want to lift a car. The small piston, this one, has an area of one centimeter square. This is the area of the uh, the, 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 the input cylinder or the small piston. The small piston moves, moves a distance of a, a hundred centimeters. So the effort is here. We make an effort here. We apply a force that goes down here and you remove this cylinder. So I hope you by Pascal's principle from our first lessons before we closed. Okay. Right. We said Pascal's principle says the force that is applied into a hydraulic system will, 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 will be the same depending on whether there are no leaks in the system. So that is why we have to make sure that our, 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 our systems, they don't have a leak. Please unmute yourself and speak, Nosipo. Nosipo, you wanna speak to me, my darling? Speak to me. No speak. Yes, no Yes, my darling. 
to ask, I don't know if uh, the by the calculations is it really an error? Is it an error or, or what? Because I'm seeing um five hundred here, and by the the car I'm seeing five thousand. So is it an error or I'm trying to understand where how we got the five hundred? Ooh, the sound is very bad here, Nosipo. Nosipo, I'm sorry. I wanted you to speak, but um. I suggest that you 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 rather chat instead because of the sound. How's that? All right. Okay. No sipo. Okay. I won't move the slide. All right. I won't. I won't. Okay. Thank. You. Thank you. Uh, the connection, I think it's my connection because I'm using a different office today. Ma'am? Oh, no, Sipo, you were asking about the 5,000 newtons. Okay. It's 5,000, not 500. I'm sorry about it. it's a misprint. It's 5,000, not 500. Thank you, Nosipo. On the calculation, it's an error, it's a typo. It should be 5,000, not 500. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for noticing that. All right. I think we can proceed now. Yeah, thank you. This is 5,000. It should be 5,000, not 500. 5,000, please correct that. I think even in the last presentation, there was an error. Right, so if this is, is our input, Pascal's principle says that the force that you apply, the pressure, change at any point in a confirmed incompressible fluid is transmitted through the fluids such that the same change occurs everywhere. Okay, so the same pressure, the, the, pressure, the, the pressure that we apply here, it is transferred throughout this system as long as there are no leaks. Why? because hydraulic fluid is not compressible. Remember yesterday we did compressible and incompressible substances, and we agreed that water and oil is not compressible. So because it is not compressible, Pascal says the pressure that we apply here, it goes through the system. It is not compressed because the fluid, the hydraulic fluid is not compressible. So this will be the calculation. We are trying to find out um, the mechanical advantage. Okay, pressure cylinder A. We are making an equation. Pressure cylinder A equals to pressure cylinder B. So force A divide by force area, force A, divide by force area A. So the force divided by the area is equal to force B, force B divided by the area here. So that will be force A divided by one centimeter square equals to 5,000 Newtons divide by a hundred centimeters square because that is the area of the output cylinder. So force A will be equal to 50 Newtons because um, when we divide 5,000 by 100, we get 50. So the input force here in the small cylinder will be equal to 50 newtons. So that will be our effort. It is 50 newtons. So when you calculate mechanical advantage of this system, because now we know 
the effort. We say the load is 5,000 newtons. So we are going to say 5,000 newtons, which is the, the load, divide by the effort, which is 50 newtons, and then we are going to get an answer of a hundred. So this system is a hundred. I said the, 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 the force is multiplied in the output. So we know that there is mechanical advantage. So it is a hundred is to one. We can express this in a ratio. Okay, so if I make effort here, it is multiplied to be a hundred here. Okay, I hope you understand because I said we, we must understand the, 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 the formula, the calculation in context of the machine that we are dealing with. So this is a car lifting mechanism. All right, any questions? You see, we started by finding out what is the input. Because for you to calculate mechanical advantage, you want to divide the, 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 the load by the effort. So we had to find out what is the effort. The effort is the input, okay? So we know we are given the output, but we have to find out what is the input. So we have the effort. So we know that our effort is 50 newtons. Okay, I hope you understood this one. So you can be given a different mechanism with different values. You must be able to calculate that. Does anyone have a question? Are you still with me? Okay, thank you. Thank you, Nossi Paul. Thank you. You want me to repeat it? My cock is my? Okay. We are calculating mechanical advantage. So we know that the formula for mechanical advantage is load divided by effort. In this system, we are given the load. The, the load here will be what? The load is the car here. We are lifting a car. We are given this in the statement, you are told that the car, the weight of the car exerts a force of 5,000 newtons. So that is, the, that is the load. The load is here. We have loaded the car. But now we want to lift the car. So we have to make an effort here. Here is our effort. But you are not given the effort. So we want to find out what the effort is. So this calculation is for us to find out the effort. Okay. I only said we must add another zero here. It's a misprint here. It should have been 5,000. So when we are making the effort here, we, 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 we did this calculation and we came out with an answer of 50 newtons. So now we know what the effort is. Okay, now we can go to the mechanical advantage calculation, which is load 5,000 divided by effort, which is 50,000. Then we get an answer of 100. What does it mean to us? It means that when we make an effort here, the force is multiplied 100 times here. That's why we can lift this car. That is the mechanical advantage of this car lifting system. Okay. You don't understand something? Please tell me, please type and tell me what is it you don't understand. 
Un kabeci. Mem is is it a must to write the ratio? No. No. I'm just telling you so that you, you are not confused when you find other calculations expressing it in ratio. Other textbooks don't express it in ratio. They just say a hundred, but I made it sure that I express it in ratio so that you will know that uh, what does it mean when it is expressed in ratio? Did you understand? Chantel, where does the 50 newtons come in? The 50 newtons comes here, Chantel, because this system did not, did not give us the 50 newtons. We had to calculate the 50 newtons. Okay, so the 50 newtons is our effort because you cannot calculate mechanical advantage if you don't know the value of the effort. So we had to calculate uh, the value of the effort and how did we go about that? This is the sum. We had to use the, 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 the area, okay? The area and multiply it um, and and and, and uh, uh, we, we we divide the the, the 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 first area a because we are looking for the input force the in the 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 the, the force a, the the force of the input cylinder which is a so we had to use the area of the two cylinders to determine what is the force of this? And then when we found the force of this, which is now 50 newtons, that is the input force, then we could go further to calculate the mechanical advantage because we need the value of the effort for us to calculate the mechanical advantage. Okay, can I proceed now? Yeah, that is why I was saying I don't want you to, to, to just say, because I know when you mechanical, you say mechanical advantage equals a uh, load divided by effort, but then that's a general mechanical advantage calculation and it is used for other mechanical systems other than the hydraulics and pneumatics one but we have to look at the specific system that we are dealing with every time, okay? I think I can proceed now in the interest of time. Use the picture below um, to discuss how force is transferred in a hydraulic system. Yeah, you have this. This is a, a, a more like the, 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 the system that you, you, you were looking at earlier. You have your input force here, and you have your hydraulic fluid here. You have the connecting pipe, connecting it to the output cylinder. This is your input. When a force pushes down piston A, it is transferred through the oil in the system to cylinder B, piston B becomes eight times bigger. Piston B is eight times bigger than piston A. Therefore, we are so going to say um, 800 divided by 100. So that, is, that gives you an answer of eight. Therefore, the force acting on piston B will be eight times bigger than the force exerted on piston A, okay? Now, we said it is, um, this hydraulic fluid is not compressible. So we are exerting force of 50 Newtons. That force is transferred 
from the input cylinder, which is a hundred millimeters per square, to the output cylinder, which is a eight hundred square. So this one is eight times bigger than this one. So the output force will be a eight times bigger than the input force. Okay. So that is the discussion. That is the explanation. You need to explain. Um, I don't know what your name is here. So the output will be 400 newtons. Let's go back to the... system um fit or you've done the, cal the calculations yes yes it will be a uh, five four four hundred newtons it will be 400 newtons right not the answer now it will be 400 newtons That's smart. <laughs> yes, yes, that's smart. Does it have to piston when it's connected to one pipe? I don't understand um, this question. Ma'am, why does it have to piston when it's connected to one pipe? A piston is a cylinder. Chantel? It let me show you what a piston is. This, we call it a piston. Okay? To, to get the hydraulic fluid to move from the input cylinder to this one, we must get a connecting pipe. To transfer the force from the input to the output there must be a connecting pipe, okay? I hope I answered your question. Okay. Right. Now, another important factor when, which we must do in systems to show that you understand the operation of the system, we must be able to draw a systems diagram, okay? from the input to the output. So this is the input. You make blocks when you're drawing your systems diagram. This is your input and then followed by the output, uh, sorry, followed by the process. And then you must be able to explain the output. That's how you discuss it. Okay, you draw it like this. These blocks with the arrows that shows the process. These arrows are showing the process, the movement. So the input is force exerted on, pis on piston A. Force exerted on piston A. Then force, this is the process. Process will be force transferred through the liquid or the hydraulic fluid is increased in relation to the area of the pistons. The output force ex exerted on piston B is eight times bigger than the input force. So you can see how the force is multiplied from the input to the output. Okay? I hope you understand that. So, when you are doing these systems, whether hydraulic will be doing other systems tomorrow, you must be able to discuss from the input to the output. You, 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 you understand the input, what is the input? What is the process? What is the output? Okay. Um, 
This brings us to the end of our lesson. Please talk to me. If there's something you want to say to me, we are about to close now. And meet yourself and talk to me.